Okay, so this week I have to start the podcast by thanking TDMR Podcast for recommending this week's movie. Because I recommended it like... Well, you said thanking. Do you mean blaming? Okay, I don't know if you noticed, but Kurt Russell had his shirt off a lot in this movie. And the hair and just the, the bad boy vibe. I was feeling it. I was feeling it. With that really terrible eye patch. Okay. And the... Uh, I mean, whatever on those things. Waste of a human being that just sails around the Caribbean doing nothing with his life. Okay, we'll get into who is the waste of the human being in this movie. But anyways, I wanted to thank them. They did recommend this movie quite a while ago. I don't know if it was at the same time as Big Trouble in Little China. It was in that area. I would I would expect it's a retaliation for me saying I hate Big Trouble. And they wanted me to watch in another abysmal movie with Kurt Russell in it. It, it probably was something to do with that. So anyways, thank you to them. Um, I also wanted to get out immediately that I am actually sick. So if you guys hear weirdness in my voice or I have to stop to cough, I, am, I do want to apologize for that. We've waited as long as we could to record. And unfortunately, my voice just has not fully come back yet. So anyway, I'm Tyler. I'm Shay. And this is Cinematically Correct. And this week's movie is Captain Ron with Kurt Russell. Yes. And Martin Short. A lot of other people in this that I don't recognize. Yes, yeah. and, and we'll get to that. But um, basically, what everyone's going to want to know is, did you like the movie? More than Big Trouble. Not That's a, such a low bar. It is a low bar. It was a terrible movie. Big Trouble was a terrible movie. Well, they were both Use your not, They're both not great. <sighs> okay. I feel like you I would didn't say that, like the movie only because you had it set in your mind that you didn't like the movie. I would say that this movie falls more in the category of so bad that it's actually okay. Okay. More than Big Trouble. Big Trouble just got on my last freaking... Okay, let's not rehash that debate. Yeah. Let's just let that die. You're right. wrong. I'm right. So, okay. No, that's not... No. All right. Brief summary. A brief synopsis. Uh-huh. Brief synopsis. Uh, so, Martin Short inherits a boat from his uncle, I believe. Uncle, yep. Uh, it was owned by Cary Grant, so it's supposedly worth a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to go pick it up at Saint Palme de Terre, so Saint, Saint Potato, Saint Potato, okay. uh, in the Caribbean. They fly down there. They find a really crappy boat and they get a local to sell it back and the movie is them sailing the, move, the boat back and fixing it up and well and they have to hire a captain because they don't know how to sail right you're, you're missing the title yes, character they well they hired a captain to sail the boat back and they repaired it on the way and then the whole movie is their hijinks getting it back to the united states yeah that that's that sums it up basically yeah that's that's the movie Okay, so starting at the beginning of the movie, um, the first thing that I didn't realize watching this movie was that Mo Martin Short was in it. I didn't notice that, I guess, looking at the trailers oh, yeah, the and trailers. stuff. Oh, I, I realized it right away as soon as I saw the trailer. I don't know if I was just so focused on Kurt Russell that I just, like, I don't know, glazed over it. I don't know. But anyways, so... Can we talk about... He was, he was going to work and he gets the news in that elevator. Yeah. Would you ever ride in that elevator with that many people? No, I, I wait till elevators are empty. So, like, I'm not a good person to ask that to. No, I would never get in that elevator. Are you kidding? That was packed to the brim and just not okay. He was excited. I'm still never getting in that elevator. I'm not that happy to get to work on a normal day. <laughs> uh, and then he gets home in the middle of the day because he leaves straight from work. Yeah. And somehow his wife, who also works a job, is there. And her, his kids are back from school, even though he got, he left straight from work and he didn't go to work that day. So I don't understand how that yes, happened. Yes, we know you read the IMDb yes, goofs. I did. We, we were aware of what you did. There but, was a lot of goofs in this movie, yes, actually. Yes, there was. I read them too, but good job. Good job trying to okay. sound really smart. Well, thank you. And then I don't know where to go from there because that the rest of the movie goes on and they go to the Caribbean. You really just have nothing with this movie, I, eh? I, I'm reaching. I mean, it is the. I will give them. It's the right reaction if she brings that boy home and says, "I'm engaged." Get out. Okay, nope. so you're talking about the beginning of the movie. Yes. 
Um, the teenage daughter is seen making out with a boy in the car who has like a leather jacket, a like uh, a moron, punk rock just type a, a, look. A, a, not a good person, clearly. By his look, I am judging him entirely based on his look, and the movie did too. And oh, I just... please, Twitter, attack him for that. No, the guy doesn't even speak. We don't have any reason to dislike him other than the fact that he is dressed in a leather coat. He's built. In, he's built up to be the the one dimensional trope of the bad boyfriend. I don't movie. think that's the reason. I think the parents just think that she's a teenager and shouldn't be getting engaged just on the whim like that. And she, oh, they totally show her character as, her... as being not great at making good decisions. Well, yes, they did that. But I, I took it as the whole, oh my God, that's the, that's the guy. I We're was leaving. the quintessential person to bring home the, oh my God, that's the guy. One of my boyfriends had piercings all over his face, including his forehead. And I brought him home without warning my family first. So that was me. No, I, I understand that it was you. I'm just saying that he was built to be the the don't bring that home to your parents trope. Wow. All right. Well, I, I hope you get massacred for that. So everybody, please go ahead and do that. Uh, what did you think of Captain Ron's, Ron's character? Uh, decidedly more likable than Jack Burton from Big Trouble. We I'm are bring... not rehashing that movie. Kill me. I mean, it wasn't a great character. It wasn't a bad character. It was kind of meh. What did you think of him? Well, I mean, he was beautiful. So, I mean, strangely very attractive. Very much Johnny Depp Pirates of the Caribbean vibes this whole time. And they were in the Par- Caribbean. And they talked about Pirates of the Caribbean because of Disney. And it was a not a Disney movie, but it was a Disney movie. It was just touchstone because it was too... So it's the original Disney Pirates of the Caribbean is what you're saying. It's, it's what I'm saying. It's what wow. I'm saying without saying it. It's what I'm saying. Yeah. But so, I mean, what I think would be great is now that Johnny Depp has been cleared of all of the horrible things that people have been tearing him down for. Well, some of them, not all of them. What do you mean? I think he's still not a delightful person to be around. I think you need to bite your tongue and allow him to make his comeback because he was destroyed for things he shouldn't have been. Not the point. Point is that because of that, because I've been rooting for him all along and I love him, that we need to have like a a Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow, Captain Ron like mashup. You know, I mean, we're all about them comebacks these days. I don't need that at all. I do. Uh, no. We're all about reviving no, the classics. No, that's no. That's not. A, this is not a classic. Um. First of all, bite your tongue. Second of all, I think that would be wonderful. And it's. I mean, it's it's in Disney's like DNA to revive things. So I mean, it's also in D- Disney's DNA to destroy things. Lion King two and a half. All I'm saying is, can you destroy Captain Ron? Uh. I mean. Well. Can you kill what is already dead? That's, I mean, I figured you thought that, so I figured, can you? How do you kill that which has no life? Right, exactly. So, I'm just saying, if you guys agree with us, you know, maybe we should start like a petition. Don't agree with her. No, no. Do not support this wild cockamamie idea to destroy an actual Disney classic with this monstrosity of a movie. I'm just saying that Pirates of the Caribbean has kind of drawn on a little bit long. And yeah, so it's, it's it's now turned into a monstrosity. So it needs a little bit of fresh blood, is all I'm saying. No. It just, you know. <laughs> it does not. Uh, no. All right, all right. I mean, just, just throwing that out there. Just throwing it out there. So anyway. You love Captain Ron. You I, loved watching Kurt Russell be shirtless all oh, the movie. All day long. All about that life. So you're now on the Kurt Russell bandwagon for Sex Symbol from back in the day? Oh, totally. I'm, I'm there. Okay. 100%. Yep. We're there. See, I didn't get it. I just, I don't see it. The eye patch The is, long hair. The eye patch is just, no. Okay, that's supposed to be funny. I laughed. We all had a good laugh. It was great times. Sorry you weren't there. I did like that it was his entire wardrobe. It was actually his wardrobe. You need to use um, proper nouns. So, Kurt Russell wore his own clothes for this movie, somehow. Which means that he had those clothes in his closet. Which means right. I am a bigger Kurt Russell fan than I was five minutes ago. Including a tiny little red Speedo? I mean, any guy that has a tiny little red Speedo in their closet knows that they have something to show off. That's all I'm saying. It's like 10 things I hate about you talking about little black panties. You know, it's the same thing. Oh, sure. Just throwing that out there. Great. Yeah. I've got a lot of tidbits today. Just 
Yes, you do. Uh, so I would say that he's not even the most useless character in this movie. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna say it. You know what I'm thinking, but go ahead. Let me know all about your insightful. <laughs> no, I tidbit. wanted you to talk about your insightful comment. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, thanks, thanks so much for introing me. Yes, you're Our welcome. <laughs> this is Shay's insightful commentary. <laughs> anyway, so since you brought it up, I will say that. During the movie, I expected that Captain Ron was going to be this bumbling idiot, that it was just going to be really funny how stupid he was, but, you know, I that was, was kind of the point of the movie. big trouble, but in the ocean. Yeah, basically. But really, the way the movie played out was Martin Short was really kind of just almost careless with how dumb he was. And I think the way that they were trying to play it, this is how I read it, maybe you can tell me I'm wrong, was that they were trying to play him as like an uptight business type character who was attempting to be spontaneous. Like he kept right. saying things like, you're ruining my spontaneous plan and things like that. Right. So they were trying to do that. So I think because he was trying to be spontaneous, he was making so many mistakes. Well, I think it's partly he sees what he wants to be in, in, in terms of a freer, more laid back person. He just doesn't have the, the ability to do it because he's very uptight and type A. So one of the problems I had with it was that they they never actually showed him as type A. But he was definitely more uptight than Captain Rock. Well, he Rock. had to have been, right. Literally every person alive is more uptight than Captain well, Rock. Well, right. But they didn't do a good job of showing him that way. I mean, when you first meet him, he's saying dumb crap that his wife has to keep being like, no, that's actually... Like Saint Potato? Yeah. So, I mean, it was lost a little bit. To me, he just seemed dumb. Like, and it, and it irritated me how dumb he was being. And, like, the fact that he was getting mad at Captain Ron for, like, hitting on his wife, but then he's, like, mad at Captain Ron for then for... sleeping with a mermaid that's not his wife. It, it was, was an very island confusing... girl, not a mermaid. It, it was kind of a siren is what it was. Well, right. So, but, I mean, whatever you want to say. I don't understand why he was mad. That, that whole scene just made no sense where he lights the boat on fire. Why was that in the movie? It makes zero sense and adds zero to the plot. Because I think, although it was reading that he was mad at Captain Ron, he was jealous of Captain Ron at the end of the day. I do think there was a lot of jealousy of the whole he's living the life how he wants to live it. I'm stuck with a family and kids and this job I don't want to do. In right. It. So I think that's fair. But he was a bumbling idiot from start to finish. I, he, he drove me nuts. Like, See, I just... I thought he did a better job of being that character than Kurt Russell did. I did not think Kurt Russell was an idiot. I thought Kurt Russell did things that well, were inappropriate for children. But that's because I felt that Kurt Russell's character wasn't is, used to being around children. Well, it's true to character because he's an irresponsible person. Just to his core. That's the whole nature of Captain Ron. Is no responsibility... No accountability for my actions. I'm going to do what I want because that's what I want to do. Right. But he was also good at being a captain in the respect of, like, he knew how to run the boat. He obviously knew how to maneuver the boat. He knew how to get people to do the things that they needed to do to right. maintain the boat. Now, he did make mistakes along the way, but some of them, I think, were planned to avoid what he did not want to do. Right. Absolutely. So... I don't know that I would say he was an idiot. I would say that he might not be the greatest person to have captain your boat. But I don't think he was an idiot. No, he was capable of sailing a boat. Oh, yeah. He piloted the USS Saratoga, apparently. <laughs> yes. So, anyway, but... Uh, then he also set uh, Martin Short's character up a couple times for failure, which was delightful. Well, but he also did set him up for... Success. Success as well, so... Well, the gorillas versus gorillas, that was totally that, on. That was on Martin Short, though, or whatever yes. you want to call him. But that was on his character because he didn't ask. This is what I tell you all the time. If you don't understand, ask. I'm not good at that. No man is. And I think that's what Captain Ron was hoping for. And then the whole gorillas on the boat. The whole movie was just a mismatch of like random different pieces that were all different calamities that... Didn't but, but wind out. It, it was typical, although it was a 92, it was a typical 80s movie. Late 80s, early 90s. It was like, it was just, yeah. I don't know. It was a mishmash of things that don't make sense that are happening. Right. So, I have to bring this up because it's, it's to me, it was crazy. 
So remember during the movie when I said that the uh, wife in the movie reminded me of someone and I couldn't remember who it was. And then I was like, oh, I think it's, it was that Christmas movie and I couldn't think of the name of it. Yes. Remember when I said that? Well, what I was thinking of was National Lampoon's Christmas. Okay. okay? So then this is just, this is just insane. So when I was researching, I was just looking up like random stuff and I ended up down rabbit holes and I found somebody has a theory, okay, that Captain Ron was actually supposed to be a National Lampoon's vacation going to the Caribbean, okay? Mm. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's like this long thing, but he has like this, he wrote like a plot summary. He says, this is the Wikipedia plot summary of Captain Ron in which I have changed only the names of the characters. Some of it is not a perfect fit, of course, but it's terrifyingly close to a perfect match. So I'm just going to read you like the first two paragraphs just because. So it says, Clark Griswold is a middle-aged office worker who lives in a suburb of Chicago with his wife, Ellen, 16-year-old daughter, Audrey, and 11-year-old son, Rusty. When he learns his recently deceased uncle has bequeathed him a 60-foot yacht once owned by Clark Gable. He decides to take his family to the island of St. Palm de Terre, St. Potato, to retrieve the yacht so he can sell it. Ellen resists the idea but agrees after Audrey announces she has just gotten engaged. When the Griswolds arrive at the island, they discover that the yacht, the Wanderer, is in terrible condition. Upon hearing this, the yacht broker cancels his plan to send an experienced captain to help them sail to Miami and and instead hires a local sailor. But So he goes through. uh, I'll post this on our group, Cinematically Correct's listener group. But he goes through and, like, there's maybe one, two, three... There's only, like, maybe a total of 10 corrections to make it work for National No, it definitely National has Lampoon's. a Nas- National Lampoon's vibe. I will I will grant you that. I-, I was, like, flabbergasted. I'm like, wait, maybe that's why I thought she was her, was because I was getting that vibe so much that I'm like, maybe that's where I know this person from. I mean, I think that is fair. I think Chevy Chase was originally in talks to be... That was what I was going to say next. Martin Short. He was, character. Uh, in fact, the screenwriter... Um, if I have his name somewhere, I don't at the current moment. But anyway, the screenwriter uh, wrote this for Chevy Chase. But obviously that didn't happen. I don't know if he rejected it or if... Um, Too busy or something yeah, happened. Yeah, I don't exactly know, but okay. anyway. But what well, does it does ring like that would be something that It makes really sense. does. Like it absolutely rang true to that. So I was just, I was shocked when I saw it. I was like, oh my goodness, this is like perfect. Also, Carpenter... John Carpenter, the director of the thing, if you didn't know, um, a lot of movies, but yeah, was almost the director of this movie. Well, he would have done it just because it was Kurt Russell, right? So when he signed on, he almost became the director for it. And he said he totally would have done it to just be able to film the Caribbean. Yeah, uh, I just I was astounded by all the different irregularities in the movie. Irregularities. So, well, like there were. Did they have problems going to the bathroom? No. There were scenes that didn't line up where you could see it cut and then... You really it, love those goofs, eh? I do. I do love those goofs. Like uh-huh. the the shower scene, which was straight out of Final Destination with a happy ending. <laughs> I know, right? That, that, that is Legitimately, how that's how somebody has died in Final Fantasy. I'm convinced of it. Final Destination. Final Destination. Final? Yes, not Final Fantasy. Final <laughs> Destination. You really want to play video games, um, eh? I do, kind of. Uh, Final Destination, because that's just... It, it was a perfect setup. I'm sure. So. Let us know what Final Destination movie has the death of drowning in a shower, shower where you can't open it. We need to know. Now I need to know. I need to see the video. Post it on our Cinematically Correct Listener Group community page. Please and thank you. So, uh, one of the things that jumped on me is what doctor that you said. What doctor? When he had the... I just saw the doctor said I'll be get my sight back in two days when he's on that island. Oh, right? What doctor? I want to know. Like, was it a witch doctor? It's the only thing I could think of. But there's no, there's a missing scene there in that case. There's still, he has to see a doctor for there to be a doctor. Well, and the island they were on didn't seem to have a lot of civilization. It had so... a hot dog stand made out of a crashed airplane. My question is, how did the person get there? Are they the person that crashed the airplane? And where do they get the hot dogs? Yeah, there's a lot of questions. And that was not a plot hole, by the way, on the goofs that I saw. Although I did not read them all, I will say. But I didn't see that on there. It was not in there. I, I did read them all, in fact. So, I'm just saying. Did but I... a tropical island where no one inhabiting it with a hot dog stand. Where are the hot dogs coming from? 
I don't think you want to know, darling. Probably it's not. Probably, you know what? They're probably not hot dogs. I mean, there is rumors that there is like a restaurant in Japan that serves human meat, and I'm just saying that maybe. Wow, this took a really dark, dark turn. I. <laughs> You asked where they came from. I'm just trying to give you a logical explanation. There you go. There were gorillas. I mean, okay, never mind. We're... Anyway. So, uh, then they go to Carnival in San Juan. Oh, they you... can't see me dancing. But No, they can't see you dancing and they're missing a treat. <laughs> yes, they do. Okay, they go uh, to Carnival. San Juan, Puerto Rico. And they lose their children in the absolute worst place to lose your children in the world. Yeah, and I mean, th- th- all of the choices that they made were just dumb, and I don't understand how they got mad at Captain Ron for any of this, because, like, you you, you lost your children, and you ended up in jail. All I'm saying. I mean, the only thing you can really be upset about from the parent standpoint for Captain Ron is giving their 12-year-old a beer. Yeah, that wasn't great, but I mean... It's a beer. It's a beer. Also gambling and... with your 12-year-old. You know what? Your 12-year-old didn't end up in jail with you, which is where he could have ended up, so, I mean... He wound up I with mean, a tattoo. What? He had a tattoo with a wash-off. It off. was a wash-off! Daughter had an actual tattoo. Y- your daughter has problems. She had problems before she met Captain Ron, so l- you can't blame that. But... Just saying. Just saying. Another inconsistency. Somebody showed up at the jail mm-hmm. from the State Department. Well, you know what? They probably had a short budget for this movie. Well, this... State Department doesn't handle Puerto Rico because we own Puerto Rico as a territory. So they'd just be regular cops. Oh, well, okay. Good for you. Yeah. Glad that you can read IMDb. Yes, I can. Very well. Or Anyways, mid- do, do we have a history minute? Uh, Well, there are a lot of history minutes. Well, uh, pick one as usual. Tyler's History Minute. Well, they kept mentioning the Pirates of the Caribbean, and there are actually a lot of actual pirates from the Caribbean. It was a hotbed of are there? piracy. Wow. Uh, Blackbeard. Uh, Dread Pirate Roberts. Are you just going to name them? Is that your minute? It's just going to be like an influx of naming pirates? Uh, I believe there was an old uh, Calico Jack Rackham uh, kidnapped a ship that had two women on it, and they joined him as... Female pirates, which was uncommon. And then my history minute, Blackbeard used to put burning things in his beard. So when he boarded a ship, his face was covered in smoke. So he looked like the devil himself. Did he ever actually burn his beard? No, he put like like little pieces of rope that were smoking into his beard. I'm sure beard burned as well, but his whole face was wreathed in smoke and flames. Ooh, that sounds like something we should totally try to do if you ever have your beard back. No. I'm totally down. I'm not doing that. Why not? Because it's I don't... It's for the people. I don't want to light my face on fire. Ooh, my dad did that once. Yeah, well, I'm not doing that. But he lost his whole mustache, I believe. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm not doing it. What part of I'm not doing it do you not understand? But you could just be like, just like my dad is. And that's what they say you're supposed to do is marry someone who's just like your dad. So, I mean, that seems like solidly you have to do it. Let us know if you agree. Just... Just tweet to us, write to us on Facebook, write to us at cinematicallycorrect at gmail.com. If it's you tough. think that this is necessary, because I mean, I do, just tweet at us. Um, let's see. I very much hate you for this, because I'm not doing it. Tyler's a... black, bear, be- black beard beard. Black? Whoa. Black beard beard. Yeah, there we go. Tyler's black beard beard. If you tweet that at us, we'll count up how many times we get it, and if we get more than, how many do you want to say? A trillion. No. At 100,000? Oh, no, we, we don't have that many people that listen, so we can't say that. We'll say get more than 20. If we get more than 20, we will do it. No, I'm not telling... I'm not burning my face off because 20 people on the internet told me to. He says that now, but he will if you do. So tweet at us, email, whatever you gotta do. Thanks so much. I mean, that's basically the movie. Okay, well, did you know that it is based on a true story? No. No. I did not do that. You went down a rabbit hole. It's not a rabbit hole. It's just... So, the screenwriter of this movie was John Dyer of Austin, Texas. And there is some article on Sale Magazine where he 
revealed that the origin of this movie was something that happened to his actual family in 1969. Um, he said that his father was a madman style ad exec in Houston, a status conscious conspicuous spender who wanted to outdo his boat owning colleagues. Um, so he bought a boat at Fort Lauderdale Boat Show and convinced his family that it would be an adventure to take the boat back to Texas. Um, the broker convinced him he didn't have enough experience to do it, so he hired someone named Captain Ron. And his actual name was Ron, and he was a captain. Um, like the movie, the real Captain Ron had one eye, and in real life, the Captain Ron had a wooden peg leg. Uh, the screenwriter said that detail would have been too ridiculous to include in a movie, even a movie that was trying to be ridiculous. Um, and the real Captain Ron was drunk so much of the time that they called him Ron Rico, and I don't know if you remember, but in the movie, Captain Ron revealed his name was Ron Rico, and that is a rum. Um. Yes, I, I, I know, because you make fun of me for reading IMDb, that you stole that from IMDb. I did not. I'm stealing it from this article in Sale Magazine. Okay, well, you're still stealing it. Any, well, I just said I was reading it from the article. Anyway, um, it says here, during the trip to Texas, all the boat's electronics failed, the electrical system experienced multiple failures, and Captain Ron managed to get lost on the intercoastal waterway. During a stormy passage in the Gulf of Mexico, the Dwyer family feared for their lives as they were tossed about by heavy seas, and at one point, Dwyer's father threatened to throw Captain Ron overboard. So this is based on a true story the same way Texas Chainsaw Massacre was based off someone being murdered with a chainsaw. Not necessarily in Texas, but just, so it's just loose adaptation. It's Hollywood just it's supposed finest. to be. It's supposed to be based on a true story. I was just thought it was interesting that it was based on anything remotely real because I thought it was just completely made up. So I thought it was interesting that something like this actually happened to the screenwriter. But anyway, yes, you can attack it, I guess. And I will. But uh, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to talk about other than that. Uh, <laughs> Okay, well, you're no fun. Uh, the one thing that night, that Captain Ron did that was nice was faking having a broken leg at the end of the movie. Why? For the dad, to make it, the dad seem competent. Yeah, see, I didn't pick up on that when it was happening. So I just, it hit me right in the face. It was like, oh, he's not really, <laughs> doesn't have a broken leg. He's going to be fine. He just wants the dad to be restored in the eyes of his family because he saw... At one point, the whole family was relying on Captain Ron, and I think it was the car chase scene, and it came to him that they're essentially replacing the dad as the important person in their lives. Yeah. And so he didn't want that responsibility, so he just passed it back off. So was he being nice, or was he trying to get rid of responsibility? You've changed your mind. Well, it's, it's both, really. I uh-huh. mean, it's self-serving, but it was also a nice gesture. Okay, well, we are we are moving a little bit slow, so I did want to say one more thing before we move into audience ask. Um, so I found a website called Kids in Mind, and it's basically a website that like lets you know what the bad things are to watch out for when you're watching a movie with kids. Okay. And so it, it lists a bunch of things, but it states that the message of this movie, you want to you take a guess as to what the message of this movie might be? Uh, underage drinking, prom- promiscuity... Um, not okay. listening to your parents. No, but what the, what is the message? Like, what's the overall message? Like, the moral of the story kind of thing. Life has no consequences? <laughs> you would think it would be something like that. It says, being spontaneous is better than being uptight. Okay. It just seemed such an odd moral to pull out of this story. Like, there's so many things you could pull, but that's what you pulled out of this movie? Yeah, like, listen to your parents, or... It just seemed like there could be so many things, yeah, and that's I what don't. they pulled out of the movie. I just thought it was so weird. But anyways, so audience ask. Audience asks. I'm sorry. I feel like I need to cough like every five seconds. So, um, Okay, so this person, Podville... It says, if you could swap roles, comedic actor playing serious character and serious actor playing a comedic character like this for a contemporary set of stars, who would you choose? Hmm. So, <coughs> what we're doing is we're trying to find two people that could play the roles the same or reversed? So, an example that somebody gave, a, a listener of ours, uh, 143, it's Breaker 6696, said, Mrs. Doubtfire equals Frank Underwood. So Robin Williams... As Frank Underwood and Kevin Spacey as Mrs. Doubtfire. 
Yeah, that wouldn't work at all. No. I, nope, that's a bad example. Well, um, I'm just trying to show you what the question is. That was the example given. Okay. Uh, Gary Oldman uh, and I can't come up with one. Who's lighthearted and fun that could play uh, Churchill? Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, lighthearted and fun. Yeah, that that's my problem, see? Yeah, I don't. Uh, Eddie Izzard, he's Eddie. a comedian. I guess. He's also British, which helps. Sure. Or what about, um, no, he won't work. Who? He's not, like, old enough. Uh, you know, the, the news guy that is on Sundays. News guy on John Sunday. Oliver? Ah. I can see that. That actually works better and I don't think it works for the movies but it's a fun thought exercise I guess <laughs> uh no I just I think Martin Short and, and uh Kurt Russell had good chemistry for this movie I mean they worked well together they did uh I don't think there's a, a good way to to flip that or make it different I, no he wasn't trying to do that he what? was he was trying to find well, if you could swap roles a comedic comedic actor playing a serious character and a serious actor playing I just, a comedic I don't character. think it works I, I don't I don't know of an example I can't think of one off okay the top so of this head. is the only movie in that it works yes okay definitively okay there's no possible way someone can come up with another answer okay so I guess challenge to you guys then and he did not like the one that was already listed no, that, so we no. need a new one okay so this I'm just going to say to you because I thought it was funny. Um, somebody called the Anagram Hunter said, just so you know, Captain Ron is an anagram of I cannot rap. Okay. I just thought it was funny and he thought it was funny too. So anyways. So that's the other audience asks? No, I'm just letting okay. you know. Um, so this one I had to look into. I needed to know. So Samoa John, his uh, tag is Rowdy Johnny Piper said, literally the only movie where Martin Short is the leading man. Just an observation. I mean, he's in a lot of movies where he's partnered. Right, like Three Amigos. Right. So he's he's the lead-ish character. Yeah, but I went through... Now, I granted, I did not click on every single movie, and I obviously have not seen every single movie he's been in. There's quite a few. But f- from... Looking through it, it does appear this is the only one where he's actually the leading character of a movie, not a TV show. My question is, is he a leading character in this movie because he shares screen time with Captain Ron? I think he's meant to be the leading character. But the title character is Captain Ron. That's the name of the movie. Yeah, but... So is he the starring character in the movie about someone else? I guess that's the crux of the issue here. I don't really know because I mean it, it seems like the movie is billed for him to be the the main character. The original title of the movie was like Martin Harvey goes to the Caribbean or something like that. So they did change the title to focus on Captain Ron. Now, okay. Maybe that was because Kurt Russell killed it. Well, was or... really like kind of big at that time and was bringing Probably. in people into the box office. I don't know. I don't know. Not the reason. very well for this movie because it bombed. Yeah, it did bomb, but. It... Bombs Anyways, hard. um, but yeah, so those are those are the two big audience asks. I thought they were fun, but you can be you, I guess. Yes. Um, somebody else actually on Twitter had tweeted to us saying that uh, something similar happened to her, and it was kind of amusing. Just wanted to put that out there. Anyway, so I think that's it for this week. Now we didn't do audio clips. I wanted to mention that I did actually look for people who knew a little bit about sailing that could talk about how Captain Ron was as a captain, like, you know. I mean, I I know how to sail. See, I didn't want to get into your pretentious crap, so I thought, like, having other people. (laughs) Thank you. You know, but I couldn't find anybody. Apparently, there's no nautical experts on Twitter. I don't know. I don't know what was going on there. They're busy sailing boats and living their best life. Well, either way. So, hopefully, we will have audio clips for the next movie, although I don't have a lot of hope on that either, just because it's, it's just not a not a great movie lending to expert advice. So now, do we have a podcast that we've been listening to that you wanted to promo? We do. We definitely have a podcast to promo. Uh, we will insert that clip here. 
Hello, I'm Anthony. And I'm Dr. Issues. And we're hosts of Capes on the Couch, the podcast where comics get counseling. Superheroes don't always get to go home happy. That's where we come in. We offer psychiatric and mental health analysis of comic book characters. So check us out at capesonthecouch.live and across all social media platforms at Capes on the Couch. Okay, so... We've talked this movie to death, I think, right? So now we will move into movies that you like again, because now it is your turn, so... We have to do reviews first, darling. We can't go to the next movie before we rate this movie. Reviews. Okay. So, what do you rate this movie that you subjected me to watch? I'll give it a seven. I mean, You're going to go a seven. So, it's not like no, a hold movie... On. Go ahead. Seven. Yeah, because... Okay. How? It's not a movie that I would watch, like, a million times over. Like, I don't enjoy, like, just fluff for very much. But it was, like, a nice, fun, cute movie. And I didn't mind checking out Kurt Russell, you know. Didn't didn't mind it. So that's where the seven comes from. It's definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely related to Kurt Russell. Yeah, and I mean, also... If Kurt, Kurt Russell is not in this movie, what do you rate it? Five and a half? Wow, you're still at a five. Parts of the Caribbean vibes really got me, man. Oh wow! I I wouldn't one liners. I wouldn't even go to five. I'm at like four seven five. I'm sorry, you're so boring. No, no, not boring. I mean, it's whatever. A half a point above. No, a full point above wherever I rated Big Trouble. One day someone will pull out what you rated Big Trouble because you say that way too often. But anyways, okay, let's move on. So next week's movie is Super Troopers Two. Joy. Yeah. So. So everyone can come attack me next week because I'm going to tell you right now I've never seen it, but I will hate it. It's it, it's a certainty. <laughs> there are certain things you can count on, and, and Shay not liking this movie is going to be up there. Yes. So that's that. Um, come talk to us on Twitter at Cinematically C. Instagram if you want it, Cinematically C, even though I'm never there anymore. Um, Facebook at Cinematically Corrects Listener Group. We do Tuesdays, uh, Tyler Trivia Minute. We don't really do Saturdays anymore. Hopefully we'll get back there at some point. We we try. We just always forget and we're busy. Right. And um, you guys are free to post in there and we will talk with you. Um, or you can email us at cinematicallycorrect at gmail.com. Um, other than that, I th- what? Well, that's the only way to get me is Facebook. So good luck. Nobody, nobody wants to get you. It's fine. Um, although. Well, they do want to get me. They don't just want to speak to me. It, facts. Facts. Anyway, so thank you to Jake and Athos Music for our intro and outro music, and we're actually not too bad on time this week. We should hit around 40 minutes, which is the only episode in the last, like, month that's been on time, so... Not if you keep talking. Anyway, so uh, we look forward to next week, where I am subjected to Super Troopers 2.